Hi, it's Greg Harrell here, and today I want to talk about fixing a little annoyance that I have with the star command in BIM. Uh, I'm doing this from my brand new studio, which is my wardrobe, with a piece of green fabric behind me. And as always, my laptop is blowing like a leaf blower, so I'm yelling into the microphone. Hopefully you can hear me. Uh, but anyway, the game plan is, first of all, I'm going to show you the default behavior of BIM uh, and what it is about it that I find particularly annoying. Then I'm going to show you the workaround. So let's start. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is disable the workaround so I can actually show you the behavior. Uh, and so that is in the loop plugin. And I've got to find something like case. I can't remember what I, I implemented this settings always. There we go, setting, there we go. Uh, so here's the workaround. So what I'm going to do here is just let L case equal zero. All right, so that's, I, I'm deactivating the workaround there. I'll explain that later. Now I'm going to open this file. Um, the reason I've chosen this file is because it's got the word, uh, the string URL in it in a number of interesting combinations. Um, and in fact, I might add another one, const other URL equals new URL foo. So why, why do I want all these URLs in here? Uh, the reason is uh, because they have mixed case and they're gonna be a perfect showcase for the behavior that I'm about to describe. Now, um, when you normally fire up Vim, it has set ignore case. Actually, no, it doesn't. It has no ignore case set by default. And same with no smart case. So that means uh, when you search, uh, cases are, um, searches are case insensitive. So for example, if I search for URL, you'll see there that it's highlighting only words that have lowercase URL. And if I search for uppercase URL, then it highlights the uppercase places where the, those letters appear. Um, and a lot of people invert those settings uh, so that they can have a somewhat more streamlined experience. So let's do that. Let's set ignore case and see what that does. First of all, you'll notice that it started highlighting all of the letters irrespective of their case. So for example, if I search for lowercase URL, I find everything. If I search for uppercase URL, I find everything. Um, and it makes it a lot easier to find things. Also, sometimes you find things you don't want to find, but that's where smart case comes in. So a lot of people have that one as well. So when we turn on smart case, it's going to do a case insensitive search if my search query is case insensitive. So if I search for URL, you'll see once again, it highlighted everything because it just looked for everything. But if I search for uppercase URL, here it's only highlighting those few places where we have a, an uppercase U and everything else lowercase. And that's because it's doing a case sensitive search. And thus we come to my gripe. What is it about the star command that annoys me? It's that it ignores the smart case and ignore case settings. So for example, if I'm on uh, this lowercase URL and I hit star on it, uh, you can see that it jumped to an uppercase URL. It's kind of behaving um, as though I had ignore case on. Likewise, if I hit star on uppercase URL, it's still going to behave as though I had star um, ignore case on. Um, so you see how I'm just jumping through all the matches there. The same behavior happens to hash, which is basically a backward search for the word under the cursor. So I'm on uppercase URL now. If I hit hash, it jumped back to URL. And if I hit N, it's going to keep going back. And now it's on things that are lowercase. So it's doing a case insensitive match. Uh, similar issue happens for G star. So the difference between star and G star is that star is going to look for an exact match for the word, whereas G star is going to accept a substring match. So if I hit G star, um, uh, was that G star? That was five star. <laughs> Um, so G star, as you can see there, I started on uh, URL and I hit G star and it jumped to base URL. And that's because it's no longer requiring that the match be an exact match. It accepts that URL is a substring of base URL and jump there. But once again, notice it's a not a case sensitive match. So if I'm on uppercase URL and hit G star, it happily jumps to things that are not all uppercase. Now this annoys me. And what I would like to do is, uh, have star and g star and hash and g hash all behave in a way that respects smart case and ignore case. Because usually uh, in a file like this, uh, just say I'm, on, I'm up here uh, on this line, I wanna find all the places this variable is used, I hit star, I don't want it to move like three words over to the right and show me the URL uh, constructor function, right? That's not the URL I'm looking for. Uh, what I actually want is like, if I'm looking for instances where people are constructing new, new URLs, I want to hit star on the uppercase one and see only those and not the other ones. Okay, so let's, I'm still gonna leave this disabled, the workaround, because what I actually wanna do is uh, basically reverse engineer it. Now I've got a terrible memory 
And so I can't remember what I actually did, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna copy this. Um, and I'm gonna go over here, I'm gonna make a new buffer. Uh, let's call it something like temp a.vim so I can easily source it. Uh, this is, you can see when I prepared it, prepared it, prepared earlier. So that, that makes it easy, I guess. Um, so what do we have here? We're creating a normal mode mapping that whenever I hit the star key, it's gonna run the following commands. First of all, it's going to set the search register, which you can learn about if you search for, what is it? That, what are the names of those things? It's like at slash. Uh, so yeah, this basically puts something in the search register. So for example, if I do let at slash equals copy, oops, I've got to put it in string inside quotes. Um, see how it highlighted copy there? And if I hit N, I jump down to it. So it, it's basically as though I had initiated a search. So we set that, um, we use very magic matching. Uh, the dot here is a string concatenation operator. We expand the current word. So for example, if I call expand C word, not the C word you may be thinking of, it prints expand because that's where my cursor was. Uh, if I go a little bit further on, like let's go search forward, run the same command, it's gonna print search forward, right? Uh, the definition of what is the current word depends on the setting of your is keyword setting. So you can actually tweak this. Um, but in most language types, there's a reasonable definition for like what a word is, depending on the language you're in. So just to recap, we are setting the search register with a very magic match, um, expanding the current word, and then we hit control uh, carriage return, which sets the register. And then we set the search direction by setting this special vim variable. So all these v colon variables are special. If that was zero, it'd be searching backwards, but it's one, so it's searching forwards. We hit enter. And at that point, the next thing we do is hit N, okay? And that moves us to the next match. So I'm gonna source this file right now and we'll see how it works. Okay, so I am on URL all lowercase. So this should behave as though I had typed slash URL, right? So I'm gonna do that. And you can see it did exactly that. So it's searching for anywhere where the string URL appears in the, rep uh, in the buffer. Now, same deal, but with uppercase URL. And you'll see there that now it's only showing me uppercase things. Uh, one thing I've done wrong here is uh, I forgot to put word boundaries in the binding because you'll see it's, it's also going to uh, other URL, but it shouldn't. So let's fix that. Um, where was it? That was uh, a, no, it was temp a.vim. Doing it live, as they say. Uh, so what do we need to do here? We need to put word boundary. Where is this? It's gonna be after, it's gonna be there. Okay, so we've modified our search so that the search register now has these little angle brackets around it, which will make us match only things that match on word boundary. So let's resource that file. Sorry that I'm making a few mistakes here, but that's what happens when you don't rehearse. Okay, so star on this one should now only show me uppercase URL all alone, not part of another word. Bingo, it works. Um, likewise, if I do URL, uh, because it's not uppercase, it's a case insensitive search. So we've got the behavior I wanted with that mapping. Uh, why am I doing it this way? I'm not thinking very clearly, am I? Um, so basically we set up a mapping like that, but we do the same for G star. Um, in the case of G star, all we've got to do is drop these word boundary markers. We don't need them anymore. Um, same with hash. So hash is gonna look just like this one, uh, but instead of forward, it's going to be zero, right? To make it go backwards. Um, and as soon as I'm doing this, let's just do it. Let's uh, put a G, a G there um, and I wanna get rid of these things. Uh, and let's do that. And I think we're good there, right? Let's source this whole thing. We'll try them all out. Okay, so G star here. Oops, uh, G star, right? So I'm jumping through the buffer in a case insensitive way, landing on things that are substrings. Um, G hash, same deal. Now, if we go to a thing that's uppercase, uh, star is still doing the right thing. Hash is doing the right thing. G hash is doing the right thing, right? Uh, so that's the fix. The last thing I'm gonna show you um, is that loop, this loop plugin, which I'll link to in the description is doing a little bit more. It's doing basically a bunch of tweaks to make searching within a single buffer just a little bit nicer. So one example is uh, we've got this, you'll notice, whoops, you'll notice here uh, where it says escape, instead of just expanding the current word, I'm calling an escape function. Um, and the reason for that is because depending on the language you're in, the current word 
may end up being something that has uh, something that would be special to a regular expression. Um, so you know, some things have, once again, if we do sit, set is keyword. Some languages have some you know, exotic characters defined in this list of characters that constitute a word. Um, and so you want to escape those. Um, so let's have a look at the definition of that. It, don't I have this somewhere? In, it's not in this file, of course. It's in this file. Escape. There you go. Basically, uh, here's an example. Um, well, it's written there in the comment. Like if you have an exotic is keyword setting like up there where you might have a backslash, for example, in your pattern. Well, we'll just escape that, right? Um, and then the other thing that we do, we basically escape everything. And you notice here it says to run in very no magic mode, which means that most things with backslashes uh, in them don't have any meaning in the search query. So you'll notice that in the example that I did by hand, I had a lowercase v, but here I have an uppercase v that says very no magic, turn off all the escapes except backslash basically, which now means that in any language, even exotic ones, uh, star will find the right thing, right? Which is not true in vanilla Vim. Um, the other thing that's different in here, it's probably nothing, just looking at it. Um, it's more verbose because I have to make it compatible with the other things that uh, loop does. So for example, loop will center the view, I think. Is that what ZV does? ZV? I actually don't know what that does. What the, f what, the f what the fuck does ZV do in this thing? I added it four years ago. Open folds when jumping a match. Okay, it exposes folds. Is that what ZV does? I guess it's been a while. ZV. Yeah, okay, that's what ZV does. I never do that because I've got it bound to tab, right? So tab to toggle, toggle folds. Um, or if I'm deep inside something, I'll do Z shift O. Whatever. Toggle the folds. Um, and then the other thing it does is this fancy highlight match follow up thing. Oh, it's got the center string. That's what ZZ does, right? Um, if you want it to, loop will do it such that whenever you're you know, jumping between matches, uh, they always wind up in the center of the screen. And then finally, we do this fancy highlighting, which means that if I search for a word that appears in multiple, whoops, multiple places, like else, uh, it highlights the one that I'm on a little more visually while doing the ones that I'm not on and more subtly with those underlines, which can be helpful when you search for a word, which is super common in a buffer, like say keys, and it's like, which one am I on? I don't know. Whereas here, it's pretty obvious which one you're on. Okay, so uh, that was a little bit long and rambly, but I do have a green screen. So, you know, it's give and take, right? I can't, it can't be perfect. Uh, so thanks for watching, and I will hopefully be back again in another occasion from the wardrobe studio. Uh, but I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.